All right. That's good. Just, I guess training camp wrapped up over the weekend. What was your assessment of how camp went and what direction y'all are headed now? I thought I thought camp went well. Um, you know how it is, the grind of the camp. You have some days you like, okay, let's go, let's pick it up. But for the most part, it's been a very consistent camp. Guys are doing exactly what we ask them to do. So that's always fun. And you can see guys' improvement, you know, throughout camp. Sam Pittman said today uh, at a lunch thing that, that Jim Cobb, he was one of the guys who made one of the biggest jumps from spring. And uh, Sorry, too, but from spring till now. Can you maybe sp speak to what he's done in Sorry? Yeah, so Anton, is, I mean, he, he's on the field. You could just see when he first got here, we, you know, we, just, we have a lot of defense. So him just learning – you know, the defense and the expectations of Coach Adams and different things like that. And that's what he said. He said, man, it was just it was just so much more defense and so much faster than what he was used to. And now that he has the defense down and he, he has the speed of the game down, you can see – you can really see his talent out there. So, you can really see the progress with him. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, same way. So, sorry wasn't really the speed of the game because he – he came from another SEC school. It was just him learning the system. Now he, now he's just comfortable in what we're calling, and now you can really see his athletic ability because he's not thinking a lot. What's what's uh, maybe your ideal, you know, linebacker rotation? Just to, you know, do you how many guys do you want to play, and you know, how confident are you with the depth of that room right now, given maybe what your expectations are for that? Y rotation? Yes, sir. That's a good question. I I would love to play all of them, but I got a lot of them in there. Um, but if we can get four to five and we can just be rotating, you know, I, I tell the guys a story all the time because I, I watched the uh, women's basketball, uh, college basketball a lot, and I just saw, like, Don Staley um, at the University of South Carolina, they women's basketball, where she was just throwing just a new five out there and just keeping them fresh. And, and we know how great Caitlin Clark is, but – they, the team got wore down. So just being able to sub and being able to keep the guys fresh. So I just I just want to put all the guys. Now, they got to earn the, the right to be out there. But if we can get four or five guys and continue to rotate them. The days of, like, when I played linebacker, I didn't I didn't want to leave the field. Um, and those guys don't want to leave the field now. But if you're playing 90, 90 snaps, 85, 90 snaps, like, you're going to have 40 of them. Like, if you run into the ball like your life depending on it, 30 of them going to be one of them you know, not as fast as, 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 as you want them to be. But if you're getting 40 just straight, just unbelievable effort, then now the scouts are looking at that. Okay, they don't, they don't care if you play 100 snaps. They want to see those 30 or 40 just unbelievable snaps. So the guys are buying into that, you know, just being fresh, playing special teams and 30 to 40 snaps. But 45 guys, to answer your question. The the cornerback, you know, spot, we got a lot – you have a lot of competition there. What have you seen from maybe, you know, the three guys that – uh weren't exactly the, the starters last year, Keon, Jaheim, and, and Cuddy. And, and Cuddy specifically, his personality, how beneficial can that be for a defense to have, have a guy like that, a little bit of swagger? <laughs> oh, man, love his personality. He has the swag. He has that confidence. He's the type of guy, he's mentally tough now. Like, he is mentally tough, and he loves ball. He's running around. Like, and that's the thing with any, any position. It really doesn't matter how talented you are. It, it matters. But if you don't have this – it, you know, it, it doesn't help you. So his his mental toughness and the way he go about his business is, is really fun to watch. And it's a good competition, you know. And and this is what I tell the guys, this is what everybody understand. The whole days of the first 11 out there, it, uh, you could be the first person running out there and get 20 snaps and be the person that's coming off the bench that's getting 50 snaps. So the days of that is, you know, so I tell the guys all the time, if we put you out there, you're a starter. <clears throat> so it's not these charity reps like – we, you put, we put you out there, you're a starter. That means you earn the right to be out there and playing for the Hogs. So, you know, you could be the first person running out there or you could go out there to the second series. Um, but just having pride when you're out there. But those guys are competing, and we need all of them. Like, you got to play three, four, five corners just because of the way the league is. And we asking our guys to play in special teams as well. So just having those guys with fresh legs is always a good deal. Coach, how close is T.J. Metcalf to maybe starting or getting extensive playing time? T.J. is a guy I think probably one of the guys who's made the biggest jump, to be honest with you. And we, we see him as a starter. You know, he's going to play. He's going to play a lot. Um, he earned that right. You know, you watch him work his tail off on the offseason. You watch him while we're at practice working his tail off as well. So he, he earned that right to go out there and, and play. 
you know, like I said, starter or coming off the bench, I don't really, man, if you're playing, you a starter. That means I trust you with my, with my, with my, with, with the paycheck, right? I, I'm putting my house note on you if you play on that field. So whether you're getting 20 reps, 50 reps, I put you out there. I got four daughters at the house. That means it's important to me. Um, he's earned that right. He's earned his, he's earned his, his, his teammates respect as well. Um, man, he, he, he go by it the right way. Him and his brother, like, it's a good bloodline. Bobby was in here last night, and I asked him this question. You know, the UAPB games, it's at 630, but the Oklahoma State games at 11 a.m., those are those could be two pretty hot games. Do you feel pretty good about your numbers there on at all the positions on defense? Yes, sir. Really really feel good about our numbers. And, you know, we do so much. And Coach Sauters, our strength coach, does a great job with those guys. And, and, and everybody, a lot of times, they look at, Myself as a defense coordinator or a position coach or the offense coordinator, but Coach Sauters, he's with the guys way more than us. And that work that they put in during the summer, like they do an unbelievable job. It was really good seeing them come to fall camp and you could see the work that they have put in. A lot of times you get there and the guys are like still tired. I'm like, what well, they been doing all summer? Not not with Coach Sauters. Like those guys was ready to roll and he and his staff do a great job. Coach, going back to the linebackers, Bradley Shaw being a freshman that got here over the summer. Curious where he's grown the most over, over throughout camp, and is he a guy that could could be in that linebacker rotation for you? Yeah, most. He's a special talent. He can, he can play. He can play. He's 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 his football IQ is just out of this roof. Um, you can tell at his high school they've done a great job with him. He, like I said, he doesn't say a word. Well, he's on that football field. He's a, he's a different type of person. Um, but he he could, he could play all different positions. We, for him to be a freshman and and us moving him different positions, and so he could play both the money and the Mac and different things like that. I mean, he has a bright future. He's gonna be a guy. He, he'll play. He'll play. And on that versatility aspect with with Switzer and uh, and Worth, I'm curious. Now that you've gone through a full camp with them, do you kind of have a better feel for kind of how you're gonna utilize them this season? Yes, sir. <laughs> I do. But don't want to say. But yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Coach, you were able to retain pretty much your entire defensive staff for a second year back. I wonder what 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 does that do when you go to like installing stuff in camp and kind of the familiarity of it all. Oh, uh, it, it mean it's it's like unbelievable difference because you don't have to reteach it. And even though these guys been coaching twenty plus years, it's like it's di it's, it's different systems. So you're not reteaching something and say, okay, this is how I like it and da 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 and they had a different way. Like, no, this is the way we're gonna do it. Like everybody like is on the same page of exactly how we want want it to be done and and it's always good to retain those guys. So I mean it's outside of football, even like the wives and you know, like okay, my wife, like she's expecting September fourteenth, hopefully the baby come sooner than that. Well they had like a, they had a um the baby shower yesterday that Chastity Woodson and and then Deke Adams, Miss, Miss Alexis Adams, they put on and had all the wives there. So the football part of us staying together is awesome on the field, but it's awesome for the wives to be together as well. Um, so the whole thing is, you know, the wives got to be happy as well. But, man, we, we got a good group of guys love to come to work. And, man, we get in there each morning, we're going to pray. We do our devotion as a, as a defensive staff, and then we get into football. So it's, it's fun being around those guys and being around good people. And I know you talked about Dix uh, when we talked to you the other day, but now that he's had a full camp, what, what, what's your take on the, how he did in preseason practice, your expectations for him? Good player, good player. And, he, I mean, he's, I mean, in that box, he's a run-stopping joker now. He can, he can kick, diagnose, has good movement, got good eyes, very strong and powerful. He's been a really good addition for us, and he, he he's going to play as well. So we got we got a good thing. We got a good thing. We'll be able to rotate guys and – he has a lot of playing experience. When he was at Florida State, he was a freshman All-American, and he, he was at Marshall and did really really well there. And now he's with us. So um, he's a guy with a lot of experience, a lot of experience. So when you when you go out and you say, okay, you're trying to get a position, what do you need? Do You you know what? The first thing we looked at, okay, when we go on the portal, because we have to go on the portal, we got to get a guy that has a lot of experience. And he, he brought that experience to the room. Curious, now that we're about three or so weeks into training camp, what's something that you've learned about this year's team that's different from last year? And that's a good question. I like that. All the questions are good, by the way. But um, you know what? It's really good to see the guys gel, you know, because you bring in different pieces of the puzzle together. So, like, Fernando, I, I mean, and he's on the offensive side. I like to watch that kid. You're talking about a leader. 
I like to watch him lead those guys, lead the offensive linemen. Taylor and our quarterback, just watching how he leads. And, you know, so you then you come over to defense. You got Anton that's, that's, that's bringing his leadership and his experience coming in. And you got Switzer and Cuddy. Cuddy likes the whole room up, you know. So I really like the leadership of our team. You know, and just those guys being so close. So I'm just you watching. You could just see, okay, these guys like each other. The group that I really like to watch is the defensive line. They got a special type of bond. You know, they during spring break they all go to Miami together, like all of that. I mean, it's just it's pretty cool to see and just seeing what Coach Pittman has built here. And you see those guys are buying into it and how close those guys are, how close the staff is. It's really fun to watch. Thanks, Coach. My question is about the helmet communications. I know we asked you last week. But do you feel more comfortable in how that is going to operate and who's going to be talking to the player on the field? Oh, I'm going to do the talking. Uh, <laughs> um, comfortable a little, but we haven't been in a game situation. Um, I'm still figuring out how I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. But I, I do think it's an offensive advantage more so defense, you know, because they, you got up to 15 seconds before before they cut it off. And now, like I said, the offensive coordinators, they can sit there and look at your coverage and say, okay, throw it to this person or they in this, run this. But for us, if you're using it a lot, most teams, they're just going to go fast because it's hard for you to talk to one guy in the mic and he talked to 11 other people and it's going warp speed fast. So it's going to be team to team depending on, you know, who we're facing. If it's one of those fast-paced teams that's tempo, then then you, you probably won't use it a lot. Um if it's one of those teams where it's, they, they do a lot of check with me from the sideline, then you'll be able to talk to them. But we looked at our, out of the 12 games, 12 or so games, I think nine of the teams are like tempo. So really it's going you got to have a way of just hiding your signals and a way of signaling and then do some pre-snap, just disguising, and then move post-snap. Because if you don't, if you just sit there, the offensive coordinator, they're going to see what you're in, and they're going to just talk to the quarterback, and it's, they're, playing, they're playing college football, NCAA, what is it, 25, video game, and they're just playing that. So um, – just got to get used to it. Not used to it yet, but I kind of got to answer on kind of how, how we're going to operate. Gotcha. Um, you guys are transitioning into the uh, UAPB prep very soon. Can you say anything that you know uh, about what you're going to face? Um, not yet, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, we've, been, we've been watching them very well coach. I know the head coach really well, a really, really good guy. Um, offensive coordinator came from Grambling. I, I, watch, I watch a lot of Grambling's film and – I watched them versus LSU and different teams, and I mean, they very well coach, and they do some things that that's like that you got to work for, and you you just can't get caught off guard. But from what I've been watching them, now I've watched them during the summer, and I've been peeking at them. But as far as the game plan, we haven't got into it. I'm trying to figure out who's gonna who's gonna be the guys that play for us. Um, but we'll we'll definitely get into that soon. Sam and Bobby have also said that they think it's an advantage for the offense, the uh, the headsets and everything. I mean, this is probably a dumb question but do you think like scoring will be up across the country this year because of it like is that a, that's a, a likely talk, scenario great question talk to the defense staff I really do I, I think that's gonna that's that's gonna happen hopefully not on the hogs but I think score is gonna, gonna go up but then I think with the iPads see, a lot of people talking about this helmet deal it's the iPads on the sideline so you're able to have the iPads on the sideline like high school so each drive Right, you can look and say, "Oh, this is what they're running. This is this is what they're in." Right, so the checks are going to be the corrections are going to be a lot better because you say, "Oh man, where that ball hit? Who? Well, I think it was a D line. I think it was a line. It was a lot of I think, I think, I think." Then Sunday comes, you're like, "Ah, oh, shoot, it wasn't that person. It was this person." Well, you're going to have the iPads now, and you'll be able to see it. So I do think defenses, defenses, and offenses as well at halftime, you're going to have to have a plan to do some different stuff because whatever you're doing in the first half, they going to go because you can take the iPads in the halftime as well. Whatever you're doing the first half, they go up there and they say, okay, they're doing this. And this is this blitz and this is this. This is what they're running. And coming out, they're going to come out here and, you know, have a plan for it. So, you, it's going to be a lot of different stuff, you know, just in college football period. But we got to get ready for that. Are there any benefits to it for the defensive side of the ball? Like maybe for, them over for the mic or for the iPad? But I guess mainly the mic, but I mean, if if not both, I guess I mean. No, it, you know, it, it is for the mic when when you got teams that are slowing down and you could kind of see it and you could talk to whoever you're gonna put the the mic on. Um, when they're checking, you can go ahead and check, you know, because usually when they check, you'll check or you'll stand to the same call where you could just talk to the guy in the mic and say, "Okay, check to this call." I think that's a, that's a benefit there. Um, 
you could miss so many different ways of like hiding your signals. You can go wristband, and then you tell the guy on the mic, wristband 88. Wristband 88, they look down real quick. So it's just the game is really hiding your signals more than anything. How are you going to signal? How are you going to do from the other team not to see it? And it's perfectly – it's legal for them to do it. So it's not one of them <laughs> Michigan-type deals. Like, if you, if you look over there and they see your signal and you're crazy enough not to change your signal, then that's on you, right? So you got to have a plan um, of hiding your signals. And then the iPad part of it, it's an advantage for offense and defense. See what they're in? Oh, this is how they're running the power. This is how they blocked it. You know, oh, this is the passing scheme they're doing. So, and then they're going to look and say, oh, this is what they're running. They in cover three or they in quarters or they they bringing a, a blitz from the field. This is how we got to block it. So, I think it's advantage both ways. Coach, I just double-checked double your resume. You, you've been on both sides of this FBS versus FCS kind of matchup. I'm curious, from your perspective, what, what's it like going into a matchup like that from an FCS perspective and just kind of what's your overall take of those kind of matchups? I mean, it's, it's – is is really one of those deals where it's, you got to understand that you're going to get their best shot. I mean, it's, it's their Super Bowl, and you got and you got to you got to respect all of your opponents. So I, I really think no matter what what level it is, if you go in with respecting your opponents and you respect them by playing the hardest you can play, no matter if it's FCS, FBS, whatever it is, you, you respect them and you respect the game by playing as hard as you can play. So that's always the message where whether I'm on this side or if I'm on the FCS side, like you go out there and you represent the name on your jersey, the front of your jersey and the back of your jersey and respect the game by playing hard. Coach Petrino said yesterday that this sign, like trying to get signs, has been going on a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any, any funny stories or um, – I guess um, I don't know. Uh, what's your take on like do, how much time do coaching staff spend on trying to interpret what's happening over on that other sideline? Oh, a lot. Like <laughs> it's so funny. You'll be shocked during the week. I know offense all around the country. They're gonna look at. They're gonna get the TV copy, and they're looking at the signals. Yeah, just one person. That's your only job. Look at the signals, and then. Boom! Oh, we can't get we can't get the defensive signals. Okay, well let's see what the defensive players are signaling. Then they then they try to get it that way, you know. So they got different ways. I, I remember we played um, Louisville, and um, and he was really good. And I saw the TV copy, and I could just see the whole time he was just like this, just watching, watching, watching. And in the halftime, they got the signals. I so we played him the next year. I was at UCF. We played him that next year, and I got his contact, and I called him like, Hey, man, I need to. And he sent me the whole thing. And he said, this is what we had. And it was like 80% correct. So we had to change our signals because they just pass it around. So they're just sending it to the, to the next. So we played SMU and Red Lashley them, and they had the same signals. I wasn't mad that he sent it around. I would have been mad if we didn't change it. So it's, it's huge, like, just signals, and it's perfectly legal. I know teams right now that have two guys on the field because you usually have them in the box. So you know how the times you see a lot of these teams behind the actual team, they got these, they pull out these big curtains behind it. If it wasn't important, they wouldn't be doing it. Every a lot of eighty percent of the teams in America, when they sing, they pull out the big curtain behind so the guys in the press box can't get them. Well, they done smart enough, they done put them on the field. So they got two guys and they just sit here and try to get it. So you got to have ways of of high of hiding your signals, you know. So you can always know like when a play happened. You go, hey man, they got our signals. Cause it's just like the perfect play. You just know, um, all over college football. So that's not, I man, it's nothing new. It's not one of those deals where it's like unethical or something like that. Like they do it. You just, if you're crazy enough to keep the same signals, that's on you. So, <laughs> appreciate you guys.